Here are a few of the most fascinating living fossils. Number 10. Pig-Nosed Turtle With a nose like a pig and flippers on their feet, pig-nosed turtles look like no creature we've ever seen before. Although a few studies have been done in the wild, pig-nosed turtles in captivity have been known to show aggression. This might suggest they are more territorial than many of their turtle peers. They are the last surviving member of their family, making them a living fossil. The term living fossil is a loosely defined term that's generally associated with species that haven't changed much at all and at least closely resemble other species that we otherwise only know as fossils. Living fossils are pretty important for a few reasons. Mostly, they provide a window into an ancient biological world that we'd otherwise only know through fossil records. Also, despite the appearance of a lack of evolution, living fossils provide a tangible example of stabilizing selection, an important stage in the evolutionary process. These interesting turtles are found mainly in freshwater streams, rivers and lagoons in northern Australia and in New Guinea as well. Because of their bizarre appearance, they've become popular among exotic pet traders. Even though laws are in place, such as uh, Indonesia prohibiting the trade of these turtles, authorities have confiscated some 10,000 turtles from smugglers back in 2010. Do us a big favor and hit that like button. Number 9. The Purple Frog The Purple Frog has a almost cartoonish-like appearance, kind of like a Pokemon character or something. In 2003, when researchers discovered the species, they described it as looking like a bloated donut with stubby legs and a pointed snout. As unflattering a description as that is, and as odd as they may be to look at, National Geographic dubbed their discovery a once-in-a-century occurrence in 2003. It's believed that they're successors to an ancient frog lineage that evolved roughly 130 million years ago along with dinosaurs. Found in the western Ghat mountain range in India, these frogs were only distantly related to a group of frogs living in the Seychelles in Africa. Other than that, they have no living relatives, but we do know that they've been around for almost a hundred million years. Number 8. Vampire Squid Vampire squids are one of those creatures you have to see to believe. Aside from a pretty cool name and a crazy appearance, they're also biologically significant. Scientifically, they're known as Vampirotithis infernalis, which translates to vampire squid from hell. That's a bit extreme if you ask me. They pretty much just float around eating these floating particles called marine snow. Not much is known about the behavior as they have trouble surviving in captivity and an artificial environment makes their non-defensive behavior unreliable anyways. They are hard to observe in their natural environment because of where they live. Given their low me metabolic rate, vampire squids have to use some interesting tactics to conserve energy while avoiding their predators. They'll eject a sticky cloud of bioluminescent mucus that are essentially orbs of blue light. This probably acts to daze predators and allows the vampire squid to disappear into the blackness without the need to swim far. Combine that with the writhing of glowing worms and erratic movements, vampire squids make it difficult for its predator to identify a single target. Now, as far as the living fossil business goes, the vampire squid can date its lineage back to ancient octopi some 165 million years ago. Pretty impressive to live that long while being tired all the time, right? Number 7. Elephant Shark If we were to do some sort of word association test here, I doubt elephant and shark would match up. But elephant sharks absolutely exist and they're quite distinct for a number of reasons. For starters, it's theorized that these guys are the slowest evolving creatures. Their genomes have evolved so slowly that they're the closest living thing to the first jawed vertebrae that emerged some 450 million years ago. Also, elephant sharks aren't technically sharks. They actually belong to the ratfish family, which was once related to the shark family, but they split off roughly 400 million years ago. Also known as the Australian ghost shark, this unique fish is considered important in understanding the origin and evolution of vertebrae genomes, genomes that include the human genome. So yeah, they're kind of a big deal. Number six, horseshoe crabs. 
The presence of horseshoe crabs on planet Earth dates back an impressive 300 million years. And in case you're keeping score at home, that makes them older than dinosaurs. Weirdly enough, despite their designation as a living fossil, they have more in common with spiders than they do with prehistoric crabs. Horseshoe crabs populate diverse regions and oceans across the globe. Primarily found in the Atlantic Ocean across the United States coastlines, species of horseshoe crabs can also be found in the Gulf Coast of Mexico, the Indian Ocean, and in the Pacific along the coastline of Asia. Armed with ten legs and a hard shell, these crabs prefer to feast at night. Worms, clams, and algae are typically on the menu. Oddly enough, they don't have any teeth, so they just crush their food with their front claws until it's small enough for them to swallow whole. Um, don't try doing that at home. Each year, their mating ritual begins when the guy crabs make the trek to the shore. That's where they wait for the ladies to arrive. Once female crabs show up, the females release some sort of chemical pheromone that attracts the males. From there, they do the dirty deed and the female crab proceeds to lay tens of thousands of eggs. In fact, if you ever find yourself near the Delaware Bay in May and June during a full moon or high tide, hundreds of thousands of horseshoe crabs will gather on the beach and you can catch a show. Most of the eggs laid become easy meals for birds, reptiles, and fish. Most eggs won't make it to the larval stage. For those who do, they can live for up to 20 years, sometimes more. Number five, Hotsen. Stink bird, kanji pheasant, whatever unpleasant sounding name you want to give it, the Hotsen is probably used to it because they've been around for so long. These tropical birds are found in the swamps and mangroves of the Amazon. Looking almost like a creature straight out of ancient mythology, these birds are thought to be the last surviving member of bird line that branched off after all non-winged dinosaurs went extinct in dramatic fashion. While there is some debate over the exact age of a few of the fossil records, there's little doubt that these birds are pretty adaptive. Their young have the ability to swim, so they can retreat to water if needed. As adults, they prefer dense trees and shrubs and often hang out in groups. Their diet is pretty similar to cows, weirdly enough. They prefer eating leaves and buds, and it would appear their population is pretty healthy and in no immediate threat. So they'll be here for a few million more years. Number four, Manito del Monte. Manito del Monte, that kind of sounds like a cool place to vacation, but it's not a vacation destination at all. The name is Spanish for Little Monkey of the Mountain. These little marsupials are found in South America, primarily in Argentina and Chile. As nocturnal creatures, they hunt at night for insects and fruit and prefer to live in thickets of South American bamboo. It's there that they make these interesting waterproof nests out of leaves and moss. Rewind a few million years and hop across the ocean to Queensland, Australia. Ancient marsupial bones are found on a farm in Queensland. This ancient mouse-like creature is believed to have lived some 55 million years ago and is known scientifically as Jarthea. Jarthea is possibly the mother of all the continent's unusual pouched mammals such as kangaroo and koalas. Initially, marsupials made their way to Australia from South America via Antarctica. Of course, this was millions of years ago when the three continents were formed together as a supercontinent called Gondwana. Scientists have theorized that Manito del Monte made the journey back to South America maybe around 40 million years ago. While they've been around for at least 55 million years, their future is a little less certain. As deforestation destroys their habitat and the introduction of domestic cats to the region makes them easy prey, their numbers have declined over the past few decades. Currently, they're considered to be uh, near threatened and conservation efforts at the moment are pretty limited. Number three, red panda. The red panda is just one of those rare creatures that makes you go, whoa, when you see one. These majestic creatures are native to the Himalayan mountains and part of China. Their red-brown fur and their bushy tail make them kind of look like a cross between a red fox and a raccoon. But these mammals are in fact the only non-extinct member of the Alluriidae family, a family close to the raccoon family. Despite their name, they have very little in common with the giant panda. In fact, the two don't share too many evolutionary traits. The name probably stems from the fact that they eat bamboo, much like panda bears. As expert climbers, they can scurry up a tree and snag some bamboo for dinner. And just like their namesake, 
they don't digest cellulose, so they need to eat a lot of this stuff. If they get tired of having bamboo all the time, sometimes they will eat small mammals or birds. Sadly, there are fewer than 10,000 red pandas still alive in the wild, and they are considered endangered by the IUCN. Countries such as China, India, and Nepal have outlawed hunting red pandas and have designated protected areas for them in an effort to stabilize the population. Number 2. The Tuatara Tuataras may look like lizards, but they belong to an ancient line of reptiles dating back at least 200 million years. Tuatara is the only living member of the order of Rhinsophalia. Because of this ancient link and because they share an ancestor with lizards and snakes, these guys are pretty important in studying the evolution of lizards and snakes. Found only in New Zealand and the surrounding islands, this species is the subject of intense conservation efforts. Despite not being all that big and around one and a half feet long, they're New Zealand's largest reptiles. They feed mostly on spiders, millipedes, worms, and beetles. They're armed with this cool-looking crest of spines that's used to attract potential mates during mating season and helpful during fights with other males. Unfortunately, like several other of the living fossils on our list, they face threats to their survival. Habitat loss is one issue. Poaching is a big problem as well. Another threat is their low genetic diversity. It's a serious problem for them as it makes them more vulnerable to habitat changes and new pathogens. Current conservation efforts center around keeping rodents that compete with them for resources out of their habitats and reintroducing Tuatara to rodent tree islands. Number one, giant Chinese salamander. You guys ever see a giant Chinese salamander in real life? It has the status of being not only the largest salamander in the world, but also the largest amphibian on the planet. Reaching impressive lengths of five feet and nine inches, these guys are longer than some people are tall. Their existence dates back around 170 million years. As the name Chinese salamander would suggest, these large amphibians lives in, wait for it, a China. Typically found in Rocky Mountain streams and lakes, they've also been introduced surrounding regions such as Japan. Sadly, these amazing creatures that have experienced a sharp decline in their population in recent years, the reasons for this are the usual culprits such as habitat loss, overhunting, and climate change. These factors have led to something like 80% decline in their population over the past several decades. The Chinese government is still currently making efforts to conserve the species. Let's hope they're successful. Here's what's next. Viral about a deep sea fisherman sharing some photos of some of the weird creatures that end up in his nets. This laughing octopus was one of them, but the post did not include any descriptions or details, only the photos. Do any of you know what this thing is? Have you ever seen one? Number one, 